That's me. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Peter Naylor. I'm a VP of Ad Sales at Netflix. I'm so excited to be here today, Future TV. And if we're talking about TV, let's, let's watch some TV, right? <laughs> Two clicks. I was born to fight. I wish to be entertained. Born to make a million. man, a myth, a legend. I love when a story starts like that. I'm bringing that energy. Yeah. You know what you must do? Take action. We have to show them that we're not just a loser wannabe. I'm bringing that energy. Yeah. We make the magic alive. We got the power. Oh, I'm bringing that energy. Yeah. We make the magic alive. We got the power. Let go quietly. Our battle till the end. Let's get it started up. Let's get it started up. It's time to play. You have to make the most important decision of your life. This is the level that I have to get to. Their only point is to take me down. Something is happening. You got work to do. Own your power. I'm 13 going on 30. It cannot be the end. Let's find out. I do love this part. Glad I made an impression. This is truly delightful. I think I'm going to love it here. I'm so in on team whatever this company's called. You say it again! I dare you to say it again! All right. Thank you for the, thank you for the woo there in the third row. All right. Uh, building the ads business at Netflix over the last year has been an incredible journey. We've come a long way in a short time and done it using the same playbook that's made Netflix the global leader in streaming. If you've ever watched one of our amazing sports shows like Beckham or Tour de France Unchained or Formula One Drive to Survive, you know that success requires great people in every position. At Netflix, we have a, dedica a dedicated cross-functional team focused on the same goal, creating ad experience for both our viewers and advertisers. Once you've got everyone working together, the next step is to set the right strategy. That's why we're working with all of you to create an experience that our advertisers and our viewers love. Because we're not just trying to offer when, what everyone else is offering, we're trying to set a new standard to deliver on what both you expect and to create new and superior ad models that drive results. Today, we reach more than 15 million monthly active users, and that's across our 12 ad-supported countries, including the UK, France, Germany, Spain, and Italy. I'm excited to showcase some of our early wins because we've accomplished a lot over the last year. So first, we consistently hear the need for enhanced measurement and verification. We now offer, we now offer more options to reach and target your desired audience more transparency to help measure and prove success, and more opportunities to drive impact. We've recently rolled out our third-party verification partners, Double Verify, and Integral Ad Science globally. And in partnership with Microsoft Advertising, we've also onboarded Audience Project to offer audience validation. As we look ahead, we will continue to build and enhance our measurement capabilities across the region. Now second, advertisers tell me all the time they want to be culturally relevant and have the ability to connect with audiences. Well, if you want to be culturally relevant, there's no better way to do it than to have your ads nestled within the top shows that everyone's talking about. Shows that create culture. 
we have a few ways that brands can be a part of that conversation. The first is top 10. You've all seen this. Top 10 is an awesome opportunity for brands to target their media placements across the 10 most watched series and films on Netflix, updated daily. The top 10 is solely based on viewing, so it's clean and simple. By leaning into this offering, your brand is right in the middle of the top streaming titles anywhere. We also know that brands want to align with specific shows that are contextually and culturally relevant to their marketing objectives. So we tested different concepts in the US over the last few months and have since launched single title sponsorships. Our first participating brand was Frito-Lay Smart Food in our latest season of Love is Blind. And most recently, we partnered with T-Mobile for the reality series hit Squid Game The Challenge. Coming up, we're excited to have L'Oreal and Lancome uh, title the US for the, two, the second part of our highly anticipated final season of The Crown. Let's take a look at The Crown and it's coming next week. Thank you. Three, two, one, sir. Thank you. Three, two, one. William, keep smiling, darling. Three, two, one. Having reviewed the data, the pollsters have now presented their findings. Asked if the royal family were out of touch with ordinary people. 53% said yes. Asked if they were wasteful of public money. If they lacked compassion. 62% said yes. 9% said yes. The Prime Minister has a new nickname, King Tony. We must change not just the politics of this country, but the soul of this country. Boys need you now more than ever. I'm afraid we don't do fathers and sons very well in this family. Perhaps you don't like to be reminded how we got to this point. The Crown doesn't ask existential questions of itself. Perhaps it should. the time. This is what we expect to be the longest serving monarch in history. People will want to celebrate your reign and mark the end of an era. But what about the life I put aside? The woman I put aside when I became queen? I will always be by your side. When fate summons, even monarchs must obey. We're ready, ma'am. got a hmm in the front row, not a whoop. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks pretty powerful. It, uh, it uh, will be on the service a uh, week from Thursday on December 14th. And again, Lancome is sponsoring the Crown in the United States. And that kind of sponsorship is uh, going to be starting in February. Title sponsorships will be available here in the UK. And we will continue to expand our product offering everywhere in the future. So finally, marketers understand that viewers have ripped up the old playbook and are watching TV in a new way, the way they want to watch. And it's why you want to go beyond conventional TV spots to reach viewers who are deeply engaged in the content. With that in mind, we're excited to offer a format that leans into this new viewing behavior launching next year. And here's how it works. So say you're at home watching your favorite show. And if you're watching two or three episodes in a row, and we've all done that, we'll say, well, the next episode is commercial free. 
and it's made possible by an advertiser. And you can see that on the lower right, on the lower left there. Enjoy this episode ad-free after a message from Scoops Ahoy. So then we show your advertisement. So at a time when more than 80% of our ad-supported members watch for two hours or more, this ad product will reward our viewers and allow your brands to stand out. And all of this is about giving you, the advertiser, more of what you want. So please keep telling us what you want because we're gonna keep investing, innovating, and building something better together. And as we do that, Netflix is gonna to continue to offer amazing entertainment that people will love. We have more returning shows and new series than any other streamer in the world. In the coming months, members will be able to enjoy highly anticipated films like Maestro, starring Bradley Cooper and Carey Mulligan, Rebel Moon from Zack Snyder. We have new scripted series like Three Body Problem from the creators of Game of Thrones and Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. We also have the return of fan favorites that really don't need an introduction like Bridgerton, Emily in Paris, and Drive to Survive. We're also committed to bringing our members and our advertisers new and exciting live experiences. Just last month, we hosted our first live sports event, the Netflix Cup. This combined two of our biggest hits in sports over the last couple of years, Drive to Survive and Full Swing. It was really exciting that we partnered with advertisers with T-Mobile, Nespresso, American Express, and Visit Morocco to bring this entire experience to life for our viewers in a very fun and new way. So as we look ahead, we can't wait to collaborate with clients as we entertain the world together. And now, with the remainder of my time, I'd like to welcome N Nicola Lewis, who is the CEO of Finecast, to join me on stage. All right, hello. Hi. Two of these? How are you? Okay. <laughs> Great. And I think I gave you the wrong title. Hello. You did, but that's okay. So what is it you say you do? <laughs> I was the CEO of Finecast, and I'm now the Chief Solutions Officer of Group M Nexus, which encapsulates Finecast, advanced TV, in integrated commerce, advanced digital out of home. Well, that, that, that sounds like a lot. It's a lot, yeah, yeah. it's a lot. Um, so with that, view, with that seat that you sit in, when you look back and take a wide view, like what do you see in the market? Any surprises over the last handful of months? Or? Yeah, look, I mean, I think certainly from, from a TV perspective, and I'm gonna stay laser focused on that because we were at a TV conference, you know, I think probably one of, the, one of the, not biggest surprises, but one of the key factors or moments was in the US in July where we saw that linear TV viewership dip below the 50% right. line, um, you know, and at the same time, according to Nielsen, you know, we saw, um, you know, streaming uh, increase up to 38.7% in terms of viewership. Yeah. And that's the US, but then if you look further afield in a market like India, you know, where linear TV is still incredibly strong and in the majority of households with viewership kind of holding firm, you're still seeing though a 45% sort of, sort of KGAR growth of t CTV mm. consumption. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when you look at global forecasts of uh, SVOD viewership by 2029, the forecasts are like 1.8 billion, which is huge. But I think the key point for me is that when you look at 2023, it's about 750 in, in the top SVODs. 2026, it will move to about 950. So the growth trajectory is going to continue. And I think individually, they're not a surprise, but they represent a pivotal moment within television against the backdrop of, of, a, of, of an economy that's been quite challenged and actors and writers strikes and right. you know pressure on content so i think it's probably you know that uh, that sort of pivotal moment yeah so it's reached a tipping point uh in many countries and i think more are coming yeah yes for sure and as long as we're talking about streaming i mean you know how does group m feel about Netflix. What we just saw. Yeah. Um, you know, I as think. As long as we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I may as well. I think, look, you know, Group M clients and agencies um, have always had a very positive sentiment towards Netflix. You know, we have worked in many countries with Netflix um, around the world, and, and I do always come at it with, with a global lens. Um, but I think, you know, and again, you, you, you sort of announced. Uh, 
a number of capabilities, some advancements in measurements, and also you know, content integration opportunities. And clients are always going to be pushing for more because they should, and, 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 and that's what we as well are there to do as an agency. So you know, moving forward, always focused on more clarity from an audience you know, perspective, um, measurement, more seamless integration um, into content, and always that forward view of what's next, you know, how can we get involved at scale? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, always, always positive. Clients are always going to push, of course. So you're talking about measurement and creativity. Everything's yep. got to be looked at together. I mean, what's your view on media and, um, and creative needing yeah. to be fused together more to deliver bigger impact. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I've always, um, I think I, I came here last year talking about, um, you know, TV's great creative awakening. Um, I'm on stage tomorrow talking about creative effectiveness mm -hmm. because I think that the unification of media and creativity is one of the most important things that we can do within the television space. But it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of taking a three-pronged approach, which is to look at high attention creative, high attention platforms, higher share of voice, and looking at almost what that effectiveness equation is. Yeah. And I think kind of obviously within the Netflix platform, that's sort of the, the, the sort of perfect um, environments. And actually, I think this is, we were talking about this sort of um, backstage yeah. just now, but you know, I know we're all here in the room, we're in advertising, but it's not always necessarily about advertising. And, and you know, clients often talk to us about how do you get that balance of you know, advertising from ad loads to frequency capping, but also that deep level of broad integration. That's a lot. So um, you're right, though. I think I'll, so much of the time we've almost lost the plot on that the creative is supposed to move the hearts and minds of our target audiences to sell products and services, yeah, sure. and we get in the weeds on things. Um, at Netflix, we had the fortunate opportunity to build the ad-supported tier from the ground up. So we're starting with an extraordinarily light ad load, just four or five minutes per hour mm -hmm. tops. We're going to be ever vigilant about frequency capping because that viewer experience is everything. We always make sure that whatever we do, we make sure it's not going to cause viewer harm. Um, we're, we're making sure that the subscription price for the ad supported tier is attractive, but then we don't take advantage of the fact that they've opted into ads to overwhelm them with ads. If anything, we want to make sure that the value is really there for the marketer. Yeah. And then you asked about integration too. Yes, how do yeah. you balance that? So it's kind of that, that notion of you know, um, innovating in, the, in, in this sort of content integration space, but not forcing brand placement. Yeah, you know, it's really hard to make really great TV and movies. If anything, we're gonna continue to allow our creators to do just that without saying, oh, and by the way, the car needs to be on screen for 12 seconds. So we're gonna be really, really careful. I think some formats work better than others. Um, and some showrunners are more open to it than others. So we're gonna, in the ads department at Netflix, we're gonna be always looking for opportunities to bring advertisers beyond 15s and conventional spots. Um, the Netflix Cup was a really great example of that where we brought four advertisers in for this live broadcast. And they were integrated into the programming without conventional 15s and 30s. They were, in a, and sports is a wonderful way to integrate people into programming. So we're gonna look for all sorts of, of opportunities, and they keep um, revealing themselves. Earlier this year, our CEO, uh, Ted, revealed that we're gonna create destinations called Netflix House. Yeah, Netflix House okay. will be um, a destination for fans where we have theaters and food experience like Netflix Bites, uh, stages. We have a great comedy brand, Netflix is a joke. So I can't imagine why we can't bring advertisers into an environment like that. Yeah. We have a big fan platform called To Doom. That's the sound, you know, To Doom. So we spell it T-U-D-U-M. And To Doom is this big fan experience. And like, so there's all these multi-dimensional um, ways. Content opportunities for clients also to get involved in. Yeah, I don't see why not, you know? Um, making of a show, behind the scenes, podcast, we're only limited by our creativity right now. There's so much enthusiasm for the ad supported plan. And so when we show up with ideas, it's like, oh wait, how, okay, how are we gonna do all these things? Because yeah. it's still early days, so we're just looking around and there's so many opportunities. And so from a 
competitive perspective, and I think we're out of time, but I just wouldn't mind asking this. Oh, shit. One <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, from, from a competitive perspective, you know, obviously I've just spoken about the fact that it feels it's a really good time to be in television. We're going to continue to see growth and exponential growth, even against the, the headwinds. But obviously, you know, we do have new, new players coming out, whether that be Paramount, Prime, Disney+. Plus. How do you feel about that competitively? Like, where do you sit competitively? Yeah. How do you maintain that competitive edge? Yeah, I think it's uh, great to have worthy competitors. I think we keep everything um, going in the right direction, especially when it comes to the viewer experience. Um, I like our position because we've created so much of the streaming paradigm that so many people look at and frankly try to emulate. I think we're gonna continue to win on content. We have so much content, movies, um, original IP. Uh, we create content in 50 countries around the world where we're making more content locally in local markets than ever before. And if we've got the content, we will have the audience, and with that, we'll have the opportunity. So I feel like we're in a really wonderful position to compete. I'm proud to be in ads business, because that was the other bit of feedback I got from one buyer was like, are Netflix actually proud to be in ads business? Yes. Is that a question or a statement? Yes. We're both. proud to be in the ads <laughs> business. It's a growth initiative for us. Our mission, quite simply, is to entertain the world with this new lower tier of uh, subscription. We can entertain more of the world yep. and help marketers achieve their goals. So it's all Amazing. good. Okay. All right. We're out of time. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.